arriving at Ilios.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to week two of the Chill Open 2018. Uh, this is the week we're going to find out who our playoff teams are going to be. Going to be some real good Overwatch action for you. And today, our first match, we've got Potato Potato going up against The World is a Beautiful Place, and I am no longer afraid to feed. Match that uh, the feeders do have a chance here with a win to get back into the playoffs. Potato Potato, of course, with a win, would likely put themselves in as well. So a lot on the line for both teams. So, with me today on the desk, we've got Shikami and Ristoff. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty well, McCreese. Cut it pretty close, but here we are. I, too, am doing very well. All right, that's good. Very good. Uh, and before we get going... I've been ordered by Ben Smash to remind you that if you scroll down on the Twitch page here, we do have a merch store. You can go and check out, get some nice, serious, overchill gear. And maybe if you talk to Ben Smash, he might be able to get you a deal on maybe a shirt with your team name on it. Hmm. Think about that. So, I'm all right. Ben? Oh, yeah. You know, you could put anything, really, when you think about it. It's a free country. Uh, if only the merch was free. Well, maybe That's someday. capitalism. All right. So, before we get going, uh, what are you guys' thoughts on these two teams? What are we going to be looking for in this match? So uh, for me, I'm really excited to see how Banley uh, sets up his team comps, especially if we're starting on Ilios, because uh, it looks like there's a couple different pretty strong valid strategies on this map, and I'm wondering if they're going to play in Arisa. I'm curious to see how the feeders rebound once uh, RDK gets into a nice groove. Uh, Champy looked comfy on the Genji, but you know that that RDK is uh, he wasn't here for the last match, so hopefully he can provide them the uh, the power they need to rebound and and take this win into the playoffs. If you could remind me really quick, uh, who are the two subs for the feeders? Uh, as far as I know, they had a roster switch up a little bit. That's later. right. They have brought in uh, two new support players. Uh, Ignis, Sakari, and Yaya will be in the back line for them today. Of course, we assume. Who knows? They might switch things up. It's not uh, not roll locked, luckily. It is not. Unless, well, we'll see. <laughs> so uh, just to go over the standings here for this group, uh, just before we start, Goat C9s. In the lead at 2-0, and looking like they are very close to locking up that playoff spot. Uh, Potato Potato and no payload for old men, both sitting at 1-1. One one. So this is a big match for the Potatoes to get themselves in that playoff position. Only the top two teams are going to move on. And the feeders are at 0-2, but they do have a map win already which means that could be important in a tiebreaker if somehow all of those three teams end up at one and two which is possible so not all the way out of it yet still have a lot to play for some of the advantages of the uh the three round group stage round robin format actually is that you're not out until you've pretty much lost every round even so, these have been all pretty close matches, so nothing to be ashamed of for any team here, really. So it looks like both teams are ready. First map today is going to be Ilios, and we're going to go ahead and get right into the action. I'm excited to see uh, which specific no, map on Ilios we load into first. I would like to see Ruins, I think... 
uh, getting to see some strong hits can play out of one of the two teams early on might. Ah, there you are. There you go. No, this is going to be ruins right away here. Lots of long sight lines, lots of sniper play common on this map. Do you think either team's actually going to run a Widowmaker? It is probably the premier Widowmaker map. We will see. Baneling has been running that Hanzo frequently throughout the tournament, so... I'm feeling we'll no see RDK swap to, the, swap to the Widow. Famed hitscan player, RDK. It looks like feeders are showing possible dive comp here. It's the Show them what you can do. They might favor that Tracer Genji dive. I'm uh, pretty unsurprised by uh, Potato Potato's lineup. Giving it Emphister's Zari performance has been phenomenal. And this is pretty much the games I've seen. This has pretty much been what they have ran for the whole tournament. This specific team, a few switches here and there, but. See, leaders are going to be actually running the Widowmaker and the Genji. Only the Hanzo to counter, no Widow on the side of Potato Potato. First off, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the matchup between Dive and this like, Death Ball style? I think the Widow's going to have a tough time making a difference with the uh, the barrier. Early on, fight break. Pizza Rogue dives in pretty deep in behind Potato Potato's line. Looking to... Oh, they do. Oh, he does get the pick on the Bane Link, so. It's not going to be able to be resurrected either because the teams have swapped sides here. When Pizza Rug jumped in back, it turned their entire tank line behind. And uh, despite the pickup on Igni Shikari, it looks like pretty solid. Yep. Pretty solid victory for the Peters. Looking good. Yeah, yeah losing that Hanzo, fight. they just they didn't have enough to swing that fight. They didn't have enough damage, I don't think. Kale got separated on the high ground from the rest of his team and his healer. Yeah, and I think the Diva kind of got in there and ate that as Pizza jumped in the back line, so... Well, Ultimate's starting to come online. The Transcendent's gonna be there for the feeders and looking for that Dragon Blade very close as well. Pizza gonna dive in. Largo follows up. To take out Kale. Here comes the Dragon Blade. Failing's right after the demon. Yeah. Couldn't get pocketed by uh, by Hunky. He's going to be a whole retreat from Potato Potato. Well, I don't know. Fister's still looking for the charge on that Graviton surge. Oh, but RDK does get the shot on the I think the choice to engage that late in the fight was sort of a mistake. Pizza is being very aggressive. They could punish. They do punish right there. Lennon the did not have Largo with him. Little D Sink Sniper. Oh, Largo, big! Eats that dragon. Eats the Graviton. Yeah, yeah, with a uh, timely transit. Articate's got three picks in a row. That's gonna be the Largo fight. gets another kill there. Self destruct. Huge play there. Ate the Graviton third. RDK, RDK also is. got the pick on the Fister, and there was just no way for the Potatoes to win that after that. With the, uh, the sights up, it was absolute slaughter. I think that was four of the final blows in that fight all went to RDK. Alright, so last opportunity here for Potato Potato to get in there. Bainling going in on the Winston here aggressively, but he gets taken out. His team did not follow him up. Right, here yeah. did not going to go for the res. Dangerous. Oh, there's finally a kill on the Ignis. That's pretty big. No mercy there. Champion has the Dragon Blade. Charge to kick it. Largo with another self destruct. Just throwing him off the point. Kills all going towards the feeders here. Kirok not going to be able to res, and that should be his first point here. Going to Momentum gained by that Dragon Blade was. Uh, incredible. Some really solid play here from those DPS players on the feeders. Largo and Pizza Rogue are also doing a phenomenal job of sticking together when they uh, commit to those dives. 
Yeah, we did see a little bit of desynchronization last week, but they seem to be playing together a lot more, and it's really working out for them. And their Ryan kept getting turned around, and Yaya kind of had free reign in the back line to just chuck orbs in and build that ult pretty quickly. Five, so we're going to see a bit of a swap three, here. Two, Potatoes M. Fister one, going to be two, switching off the tank onto the Farah. And we answered by RDK's Farah as well. Let's see. Not a super surprising pick on this this map. We've seen a lot of these fire battles before. And Fister lands the first direct yeah, hit. Two direct hit. Seems to be more experienced on this hero and takes the first fight. Very potentially. A lot of forward momentum making us get the res. Get the res. Oh. Fister and I need to win this one again. And all the kills coming through for the beaters. I blinked in RDK and Largo and cleaned up half their team. Even after that first pick, just, uh, winning the ground war there were the beaters. It wasn't a decisive dive in after Fister got that pick, is the, I think the problem. They kind of let them reset up on the high ground, and as a team, the beaters were in game. Fister dropped down. Let's see. We haven't seen a lot of uh, dive tanks being played so far, a lot of Reinhardt, and maybe the you know, Potato Potato maybe not prepared to deal with that dive. But Fister is coming up with the kills here. Kills the entire pharmacy by himself. This is the opening that they, uh, they get. As the rocket rod. Gets Yaya, DMAC is in. He just barrage if he wants, but they just gonna clean up the point without him. Hard to get swing for defenses. RDK does get the revenge kill, but gonna have to back away with 51% taken. So the that kill's actually pretty impactful. It gave him enough ult to uh, guarantee that he'll have Barrage when they engage this next fight here. Baneling up on the high ground trying to take out RDK, but not so easy with that Hanzo. Largo gonna pressure Baneling here. Gonna force him down off the high ground. And now they're gonna attack. Another <laughs> two direct hits in a row from Fister on Tardy Kicking. He's really giving him a run for his money on this map. Jaya goes on to the point with the Transcendent. Dragon Fister's Strike coming for through. That Trance is out. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Our ticket just holding it. that point. Oh, Baneling does go down though. Oh, big hammer from Car Ticket. Ultimates come out, they will secure the kills. Largo's gonna have to go back. Oh! RDK! We'll take out Car Ticket. But it's three on three here. Valkyrie comes out from Ignis. He's confident he can carry this fight. Largo does get Kale, but steps in the trap, and the reinforcements are gonna start to come in from both sides. Mr. Lens, another direct rock in our RDK. Mainly getting the kills, but. Beater's starting to take this over once again. Looks like Card Ticket's gonna go back and concede this point back over. 77% going to be taken for Potato Potato. So, very close here. Kind of a messy engage out of the feeders, but they did get all the frags they needed, so I guess it worked out. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. goes in aggressively and gets Fister with that Discord orb. There's the revenge he was looking for. He's taking on Ooh, they're going in aggressively, pushing them back to spawn here. We want to make sure they only need one more fight here. Secure this map. Go up 1 0. Very late kill on the Hanzo. He's going to have to be running the entire time. Ooh, RDK going after the Mercy here. Gets one hit. Can't hit the second. Oh, but a self destruct from Largo. Takes yeah, out the farmers. That's huge. And now, no one's going to be able to touch the point at all here. Yeah, the plan of Largo is just phenomenal. Right? He not only defense Matrix that uh, Dragon's but secured like half of the kills. Big win there from the Fears playing this dive comp. Really looking a lot better.
see Champy here. Pull out the Dragon Blade. Just to clean up at this point. Potato Potato scattered. They need to figure out what they're going to do about the Yaya because he was just... He, I mean, he sat basically back uncontested for most of the, the start of both rounds and he just was shooting orbs out. Did he die? Did we see Yaya actually die? So the second point, I'd say about 30% in, that he got dove when the other team realized that he was super spread out on the point, hanging back, and he died and they flipped it. And then as soon as they came back, we had that staggered fight and he kind of decided it. Just absolutely phenomenal coordination between the Discord targets and the, the DPS out of feeders. They're not afraid to feed. They are not indeed. And we're not afraid to see some more King's Row. King's Row. King's Row, baby. Yeah, they That's did very the well game. on King's Row last time. It shouldn't be a big surprise there. Many oh, people's uh, favorite map is King's Row, as far as I can tell. All right, so could see. Uh, what do you think we'll see in terms of strategy here? We have seen a lot of Farah played on all maps in tournaments so far, but on King's Row as well. I think that no matter what, we're definitely going to see Fister and Bailing on the Zarya Hanzo combo. It this map complements that specific composition so much. Uh, I I can't imagine they're not going to play that on attack. A defense though, I. Not sure what they're going to go with. I don't think it's nearly as strong because the, the momentum swings that you need to like do a hold on A, the Zarya and Hanzo require just a lot of investment and time and all charge to, to do, and it's hard to sustain for like four minutes. Right, so it looks like the teams are going to be opting to swap sides. So feeders have elected to defend first. And Potato Potato will be on the attack. So we'll see. Uh, will, will they be able to run that dive on the defense, do you think? What do you or think, will they go to a more standard defensive composition? I don't know. I kind of see Fister playing the Farah here. As good as Zara, as good as Zara is, he's the real. I mean, he's made differences on both, but the the far is just such a difference maker, especially on this point. It's possible. Um, I I think if he plays the far into RDK's widow, it's going to be a a rough attack. Or is if he like decides to do the Zarya Ryan Hanzo comp with the rest of his team, if they, if they decide to go with that strategy. I think they'll have a little bit more success against Hitscan, but RDK may not also lock Widow um, on point A defense. So that's. I'm actually. I think that. I should worry about probably is what uh, feeders are going to run on defense because Potato Potato can really quickly like swap and adapt if they get wiped. But. Well, we're about to find out. We're going right into King's Row. Both teams are ready. I think the key to swinging the fights for Potato Potato is just to, to kill Yaya. We'll see, they have not had the Winston or the Diva to get deep into that backline, but running the Reinhardt. So we'll see if how they can get the pressure onto that Zenyatta. Uh, seeing Shapey unfair would not surprise me either, actually. Of course, this map has always been favored by Hanzo players. Hanzo, of course, very strong right now. Expect to see a lot of that sniping action. Do you know if his uh, new Storm Arrow changes have gone alive yet, or are those still just on the ATR? There have been no changes this week. <sighs> still the same Hanzo that we all know and love. I imagine that we will see Hanzo's probably on both sides of this map for, well, maybe not last. He's so incredibly strong in streets in King's Row because of how narrow it is. We'll see. Uh, looks like the feeders have elected to go to the Reinhardt, moving Largo onto the main tank role. Pizza going to be playing the D.Va. 
Turn to cave. Showing that Farah. Centering himself on that uh, window. Do you think pick uh, from Baneling on the Diva? Do you think that's to combat Yaya and possibly uh, get in the face of the backline a little bit? We've seen this triple tank strategy in the past, looking to get just get onto the point, make sure that the push the feeders off of it, and start getting that percentage taken off. Reinhardt's both going and swinging. Baneling aggressive, but car ticket gets taken out immediately. And that's going to have to be a retreat right there. Nothing leaked. Largo gets the charge on the Pure Rock, so. Builds himself a decent amount of uh, alt charge. They did a great job of retreating. They only spent 30 seconds on that attack. Didn't give up that much uh, alt charge. Although, pretty K is looking pretty close to a dragon already. The swaps are going to come through. Baneling will go onto the Hanzo. You know, try and set up that Dragon Ball combination. Argo, 66% to the Earth Shatter. Both Ryan Did he smash it out? Both Ryan's in deep. It's hit. Kirok, right in the center of the Dragon, can't do anything about it. Once again, a quick victory here for the leader. Champion's doing a phenomenal job of following up on damage. And just <laughs> fragging out, absolutely. Be a tough like take. Almost ready. Uh, close to dragon. Uh, if they do another eco push, even if they get no progress, we're likely going to see that that dragon ram we'll come out. Well, yeah, has the trance though. They want to force out that transcendence if they can. Oh, big pick from RDK. Dragon and dragoning over the point. point. That's going to allow them to get the position. Oh, big Earth Shatter from Largo. Gigantic. Get the Mercy, that's huge. Largo's doing so incredibly well. He's set like this iron hard defense. Valkyrie was used by both teams. Reds will come on to Largo and... And they keep the trans. Leaders should be on back at full strength for this next fight, but... Earth Shatter and the Grav online for Potato Potato. Don't quite have the Dragon Strike up yet. We'll see if they want to save that for the Graviton. Kartek and Fist are moving pretty aggressively on the Lark. Rocket Barrage out of Champion. He goes down. Shatter finds no. Tanks oh, no. They can't keep the tanks up, though. Went in, got taken out. They're going to rear for another push. So, I just don't think the, the Moira is going to be enough. To oh no! Oh, no! Misclick there from Yaya. Yikes! That might actually throw their game. They've got the Grav Dragon. Like error there. Grav Dragon is there. There it is. Is it gonna happen? I can guess. Two kills. But Mercy goes down. Baneling goes down. Already Able to stay alive. Are the Leaders. Yaya has or now this Our potato potato is going to be able to push this before the Mercy gets back. They're on their way right now. Kartek is holding a pretty aggressive position, but he manages to get the healing. This are in on the tracer. Gonna have to recall from the Valkyrie used by Ignis. Doesn't even matter because he's about to have another trance. Attack visor comes out from Kale. Gets Largo. Does manage to pick down and RDK. Yaya has another trance already. Let's see. Both threads are used. Champy just get the kill, but Baneling takes him out. Largo, another big shatter. It's three. It's the pin. Jarakas has the Falk out, but it's too late. Car ticket's gonna have to get big earth shatter. But goes down. It's just the two support. Oh, that's important. Red doesn't quite come out. Kale's gonna try to contest. Yeah, push back. Self-destruct just to clear out the space. is able to contest with the trigger. Bailing moving. Bailing gets three. <laughs> Can't get the dragon. Car ticket. Can he touch? Cannot touch. Just barely got stopped. Oh, almost the heroics there from Bailing, but the numbers three just kills. too Zero. far in the advantage Zero. of the feeders.
Is that's a full hole. We might see a draw. We might see a quick end of our series. So just one tick needed by the feeders here to keep themselves alive in the tournament here. Potato Potato going to need very strong hold on the defense. Let's see, they're showing uh, Fister on Soldier 76, Kale on the Junkrat, and Baneling on that Reinhardt. You gotta think that Reinhardt battle, they really want to have the best chance to have their most experienced Reinhardt player, most aggressive Reinhardt player to counter Largo here. That makes sense. I would honestly say so far, Largo has been my MVP for this game. Just the positioning has been flawless. He was able to block the huge Earth Shatter, uh, get a few incredibly valuable ones himself. His pins have been on point. Uh, his Diva play on well, or not well, uh, the second second map, Lighthouse. Like, cleaned out the second half of that, like the second fight. All right, so Burrito, Uncle Hunky, back on the Moira, of course, as always. Jirak on that Mercy. So for the feeders, we've got, looks like we've got a triple tank and the Brigitte, Lucio and Moira. So we think we all know what they're going to do here. Going to go as fast as possible, run onto that point, start doing damage. It's the ghost comp. Well... Largo going in. That's the bubble. Pizza Row goes on the high ground to contest all the DPF. Baneling already has 56%. Gets, gets taken out. Hale shooting down with those jump track grenades. Can he get any kills? It's all going to, uh, it's all going the way the feeders. Just like that. Looks like this one is going to be over. Kale. Gets the rip tire, but not soon enough. Peters get the 2 0. They will stay alive. Play of the game. So, what's the uh, overall record? Both these teams are going to be at 1 and 2. But Peters now with 3 map wins to Potato Potatoes 2. So, that's all going to ride on the Excellent. other match, Goat C9 versus No Payload for Old Men. That's going to determine who makes it in and who will be going home. Exciting stuff. Not a long uh, stream today, looks like. Yeah, unfortunately not, but still some good action. Uh, do you have any final like analytical thoughts or stuff? Maybe on things they could have swapped up at the last minute or comp decisions? They just, I mean, the Yaya was the difference maker there. I mean, Largo Largo played excellent on the tanks. He created space, but Yaya just completely uncontested on those points as Zenyatta. And he just, they couldn't match the damage output that he was adding to the team. You constantly saw him getting assists and finishing off Fister on the Zarya as he was trying to retreat, so... I mean, they could have locked that Diva and just, or maybe switched up the, the comp and, and dove him, but I don't know. Without that, they weren't going to win that match. Yeah. Just it's a um, quick one. Well, it's quick, but the feeders really, uh, I would say they really told themselves. They came in a like a wrecking ball. They might have been looking a little disorganized before, but over the course of the tournament, really came together as a team and played a lot better. So even if this is their last match, a lot, they can uh, have a lot to be proud of here. Absolutely. And the idea that this is a, a yearly thing, an annual event, gives me a lot of hope because, man, some of the, the improvement that I've seen from some of these players from last year. Largo was great last year, but, man, this year he's just, oh, that was freaking phenomenal. All right, so that will be all we have for today. But to go over tomorrow's schedule, we've got at 9 Eastern time, 9 p.m. Eastern, we will have Van Hayes versus the blue team. 
And then at 10, we will have Goat C9s versus No Payload for Old Men. Both those teams looking to lock up their playoff spots. So that's going to be a very big match. But until then, we are all done for now. I want to thank everyone Merck on the camera, Ristoff and Shikami on commentary, and of course, all of you for tuning in. That's going to be it from us, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.